Hi, everyone. Welcome to Accidental Experts. We're your host. I'm Danny, And I'm Tay. And we just had the most amazing hangout and just chill talk with this amazing... Tay's laughing at me, but Sorry. she's the most amazing... <laughs> Interior designer, I would say, I think yeah. she was my first follow. Her name is Danny Daisy. She is an inspiration, an icon, and a legend. She has done the most impressive projects. You probably know her from Trixie Motel on HBO. I literally binged that in one day. I am her number one fan. <laughs> and we get to be with her, and we just got to hang out in her house, and we got to see her space in person after she, years of being fangirls. Yeah, and she just talks so much about you know her journey and success. And also spills the tea. Yeah, a lot of it. So Watch stay along. tuned. <laughs> I can't believe where we're sitting right now, Taylor. Um, colorful worlds collide. I can't believe we're here either. I've like seen this place a million times on the internet. On the internet. Like it's really different. I feel like seeing something on social media and then coming in person. Can you set the vibe? Tell the, oh, view, yes. the audience. Um, visually, it's, uh, I want to say, a tequila sunrise, colorful <laughs> vibe. Ooh. Lots of scallops, beautiful circular shapes, and amazing textures. Just so funky and fun and eclectic. And obviously, we're at the Queen Danny Daisy's house. Yes. Hello. Wow. I can tell you how happy I am to have you two here. <laughs> like, of all I people. Can't. I mean, we freaked out when we walked in. Yeah, the outside, beautiful. The inside, beautiful. Even more beautiful. No, like we went into her bathroom for like two seconds and we were just all fangirling it's, over her new tile. The most beautiful bathroom. Pink checkered floors. Amazing. That bathroom is my pride and joy. <laughs> I understand. I like the the fact that the tile matches the walls. I'm amazing. inspired. Thank you for having us in your house. Honestly, we're so excited to be here. I'm stoked. I mean, I've been following your guys' journeys on TikTok, <laughs> and it's just fun that we're all here because we're all from different cities. Mm -hmm. Like, to get all of us together in one place is kind of surreal. It's crazy and in your house. Oh, my God. But it just makes a lot of sense to be with you. Like, I feel like out of everyone on the internet of home decor, like, social media, mm -hmm. like, you make the most sense with us. Like, it just... All our styles so, yeah. kind of make sense. Vibe. <laughs> yeah, we're the colorful girlies. Yeah. yeah. The best niche, I would say. I think I so. Think so. <laughs> I think more people need to get in the colorful game. Yeah. And we're kind of leading that in a way. Which is uh, really, Not to really toot our own horns, but I think so. Yeah. So, Danny, tell us a little bit about how you started decorating. I mean, I know it's like a very broad question and I know it goes... It's a good question. There's, there's a lot that goes into it. I know Because I know you. I'm, I like know your entire history, <laughs> but... Tell us a little bit about that. It has been a journey. And it really goes like all the way back to when I was young. Obviously, I'm a naturally creative person, been drawn to both fashion and art and interior design. When I was younger, I kind of thought you have to choose one. So I played The Sims like relentlessly. <laughs> and I was like, I would love to be an interior designer, but I also love clothes. I would like mm -hmm. sew clothes for my dolls and shit. Oh, my God. Can gosh. I cuss on you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I choose fashion. So I went to like a small trade school for fashion design, ended up in apparel graphics. Like I was designing t-shirts for a lot of my career. That's really um, amazing. Working like corporate design. And it, to me, it was like really cool because it was a combination of art, which I always loved and was drawn to, and clothes. And I was like, dope. I'm getting to do kind of two of the things I wanted to do. And I was like pretty stoked about that. And, you know, years of corporate design, kind of just having to do the same thing over and over, I felt like not very creatively challenged and eventually took the leap to start my own clothing line where I actually had creative freedom. Which you're actually wearing right now. Yeah, <laughs> I Stacey love it. LA. Repping it. Um, yeah, that was in 2016. So it's been a minute. And what was so cool, like after working corporate design, they just put you in a box and they just want you to do one thing. And when I started my own thing, I could do social media. I could design a website. I got to do marketing, things that I was really excited about. Excited and, like, about the marketing. <laughs> I mean, at the, this was early social media. It was like the landscape was very chill oh. and very happy. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about where you were working in, in the fashion corporate world. Yeah, did you just leave it and go do your own thing or were you doing it at the same time I'm just curious so I worked for a lot of companies like I did Urban Outfitters like Flex. women's tea design Extremely which I cool. thought was my dream job but yeah. honestly like I had like a really mean art yeah. director there and I did not enjoy it I worked for Macy's doing menswear and then I worked for Torrid Hot Topic 
Hell yes. That is iconic. <laughs> Honestly, they were like a really chill company to work with, but I got in trouble because I was like posting my stuff on the internet oh. when I wasn't supposed to. And then they sent out like a warning to the team. Oh. And then I just is blocked, that why you I blocked everyone that I worked with. Oh. I thought no. I was going to, and I kept doing it. I was like, I'm a little bit of a rebel. Oh my God. And then I got fired. Wait, and I was like, hey, but that's so posting. Hot Topics yes. vibe, being a rebel. I know. So not not, not, not corporate. Corporate. <laughs> corporate. So it's like kind of ironic that the thing that got me in trouble and fired is the thing that helped my business start and it thrive by done. sharing really candidly mm-hmm. online. But I did get a job with a startup, Revice Denim, actually. I fucking oh named God. that shit. I like designed the logo and it was a lot more vintagey when I was kind of at the helm. I was like the first employee. Oh my God. And then I finally left to start my thing because I was like, hey, I helped some person build a company, market. I finally got to do all the things I wanted to do when I was only able to do one thing in corporate. And I was like, I think I could do this for myself. So I kind of like built up the courage, yeah. started Daisy and really shared candidly online. That, that sounds so terrifying crazy. though. You just what? left something and started something completely on your own. Wow. Well, oh, wow. my question, I have two really big questions, but first one, how did you manage to go from college, straight out of college, graduated to land such a great or great jobs yeah, like and the big dream brands? job? I had an thought. internship with a t-shirt company and because I was, I went to school in San Diego and there's not a lot of fashion industry down there. So I got a job at like a surf skate brand t-shirt company mm-hmm. and it was like, oh shit, like I can do fashion and art I got to design like some of the silhouettes and then I ended up getting a job with that company so I mean there's a lot in between like this is like the, over the span of 13 years of designing okay. so I don't want to okay. like make it it wasn't like it. freshly out of yeah college. yeah but that was kind of like that internship helped me realize like oh I actually really like this more mm-hmm. than just doing the silhouette design yeah so during those 13 years were you like saving your money in hopes to do your clothing line yeah I was like penny pinching I started Daisy with I spent $4,000 on my first run of shirts and I stored them like in all the kitchen cabinets of my studio oh my apartment because I didn't cook. But that's so much money. Like and that's wow. so much merch. I mean, listen, I was a corporate girly, but like <laughs> Urban Outfitters, I was a designer, money. but it, you know, it was a career. So I did oh okay. My. You know, no, that is people's design. dreams, jo- dream jobs of like, I mean, yeah, when I was in high school, it would be a dream to work for Urban Outfitters. And then oh what's that saying of like, don't meet your idols? Because then they fall short. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of when you said working at Urban wasn't what you dreamt it to be. Exactly. Sometimes you got to build your own dream job. I also (laughs) feel like creative corporate, there's like no such thing. They don't let you be creative, even though it's like a creative industry. I mean. Creative corporate. Yeah. They're two opposing things. Yeah. It's sad too, because there's a lot of amazing creative people that could be doing cooler things, but they're so limited in their jobs because of bureaucracy and corporate bullshit Mm -hmm. like I I feel like I was stifled so much as a designer and I was finally able to really explore my skills when I was out on my own so how much longer after doing your clothing line did you start decorating like how did that happen what was the transition there like how are you decorating right now this is the real accidental expert (laughs) (laughs) I love that uh so basically like I will say uh, with a history of like apparel graphics and design in general, like working with colors and prints has given me like some background in design. And there's a lot of crossover between fashion and home. Like you guys know, like if you love decorating your home, you probably love clothes too. Like there's a huge, like the Venn diagram is like almost like fully eclipsed. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like if you know how to decorate your space, you know how to dress yourself. Like it's it's really inevitable. Like how do you not? Exactly. (laughs) It's kind of like putting together an outfit. You're like, all right, what prints, what colors, like how's this outfit going to work? You kind of apply it to a space. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. I want to hype you up for a second because people who are new to the podcast or new to you they don't know how you truly are an expert in this decor space like you started in fashion and now cut to 13 years later you have your own tile line you have your own couch line with Joybird. like you have your own decor business you are designing for famous people on the internet you were on trixie motel a tv <laughs> show like you are beyond an accidental expert like you have corner You're the, the market. expert of yeah. the experts like <laughs> I went mean? from no like no you didn't go to school for interior design and then or graphic design this is which insane. is like what a lot of my career was so like the accidental expert thing is real but also that sort of trope of like there's no overnight successes you know it's been like a lot of years of like trials and errors to finally like get these really cool opportunities and things 
And with the interior design stuff, like I just started decorating my own spaces and sharing it online, very similar yeah. to, to you two. Exactly. And people start to notice and people were like, oh, do you take on clients? And I was like, you know what? I've like tried to limit myself in my career, like working for corporate and, you know, having a lot of like men in corporate be like, no, you need to rein it in and tone down. And, mm -hmm. and like when I finally started to work for myself, I gained confidence like, oh, I can do this and I can also do that and I can do social media. And it was very freeing. And when somebody asked if I was taking on clients, I was like, I guess I'll <laughs> yeah, do I media like chairs all of us. Too. Yeah. And like, we we did it for ourselves and people were like, can we hire you? Exactly. Like, oh, yes. yeah, I guess you can. And I love it. I mean, especially with the background in graphic design, like building digital renders is definitely a strength of mine with clients. So I feel like that's kind of helped me. Like I design the spaces before we go put paint to the wall and do all this stuff. So everyone feels really confident. And that kind of helped build my confidence saying like, okay, we're going to go do all this crazy colorful stuff in your space. Yeah. But. And so you started posting everything online, as you mentioned. So do you think social media kind of changed your life like that's the reason why you're able to do this oh yeah no I would be working corporate design hands down even with my clothing line like sharing on social media that was my first thing and you know seven years ago Instagram stories had just come out and I started seven to years share already. seven years ago oh it was my like God. right around I when I started my happening. clothing line yeah <gasps> I remember it happening too oh my god I, it was like my clothing line had maybe been around for like six months and I was just posting photos and as a graphic designer I was able to make it look more legit than it was when it was really like one girl in her studio apartment so the website looked shiny and I wanted the brand to look bigger than it was and as soon as Instagram stories came out, I was like, oh, I need to utilize this new tool. So I like popped on and I was like, hi, I'm Danny, the designer and owner of Daisy LA. And it's just me. And I'm going to design like a shirt right now on Instagram stories. And all these people were like, because I had started to build a following. I was working with like friends who are influencers and stuff. And they were like, oh, my God, I had no idea it was just one person. And that you did all the designs and like hand drew all the shirts and prints and stuff. Yeah, start to finish. It's all you. And people didn't know. And then it kind of dawned on me like, oh, like the superpower isn't looking bigger and fancier. It's being small mm -hmm. and embracing that and sharing the story of running a small business, the highs and the lows. And that's when things really started to take off for the clothing line. When yeah. I was finally being like more real and vulnerable. Exactly. Yeah, because people like can switch. relate. I feel like nowadays we just crave that like relatable content or like that real vibe online because I feel like at the start of Instagram well I feel like Instagram still is kind of curated curated like it very is. much curated it used to be so curated Do you guys remember like when we used to have to put like well not used to have to but everyone would put all those filters where like the colors weren't even oh like God. actual colors Valencia like, filter I feel like the grass oh, yeah. was orange like <laughs> there was I some still, crazy filters. I need to like break out of my like Instagram like neurotic mindset where I'm like must look like this yeah no, I still am sort of like that I find like on TikTok I post absolutely batshit stuff like I will just be crying and saying that like I'm bipolar versus on Instagram it's like only nice things on there happy happy <laughs> yeah I don't I know mean, why I still do that I mean I find when I break the mold here and there and I like kind of veer from the like polished look people really do appreciate it but it's hard to like break out of that and also to find the line of like what's too much what's what's too little yeah. like it feels more vulnerable on Instagram maybe because it's like actual family friends coworkers, like they communicate with me on there. That's it used to be just a personal page versus TikTok. I'm like, it's just the internet. So that's like the difference, the mental barrier. Yeah, it's weird. Did you start on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. So I started on TikTok. I don't know. It was like right after or near the end of like when it really started to blow up. Actually, I'm a little pissed because my friend got me on Musical.ly before it was TikTok. <laughs> Wait, I posted a couple times and then I never posted again. Oh my God. And then I was like, damn, I should have kept that going. Well, it's not. <laughs> is it the same account? That account I can't even log into oh. and it has a handle that I want and I'm like, <laughs> no. oh no. But whatever, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, I, Instagram was my like. That's meme. your OG. Yeah. But I have a lot of fun with TikTok. And like you said, it's like, it feels less intimidating more casual. yeah yeah you can just throw anything on there and if it doesn't perform well who cares exactly no one's gonna see no it, one saw it anyway. yes on it's instagram strangers. Oh. it's strangers yeah. instagram it's like people who know you so like they will be disappointed if you post yeah. one like unbeautiful thing is how i feel <laughs> so since you started on instagram because i kind of 
am like so like particular with my TikTok because I feel like that was like where I was my like I was like born like I feel like TikTok is <laughs> my like I was literally birth birthed to you. from TikTok that's your native platform yeah 100%. it is and I feel like all people like depending where you started that's like the one you lean more towards mm-hmm, so sure. do you lean towards Instagram more that's where I'm getting a lot of my like sponsored stuff which oh, has really? become like a bigger part of my income than I ever knew was possible mm-hmm. so that's where like a lot of brands I feel like are used to and comfortable like doing partnerships mm-hmm. on, which is great. Oh. Like I'm comfortable with it. So they I ask less you, on TikTok. Is it so they ask you like, I want this ad to be on your Instagram and they're not asking it to be on your TikTok? Yeah. Oh, okay. I get some TikToks and sometimes it'll be like post on both. Wait, now that we're talking about ads and stuff, um, can we talk a little bit about getting a little personal? Do you think content creation is kind of where like your revenue is coming from and like sustaining your lifestyle or is it also decor or is it less decor more decor more social media what do you think what's fascinating is it's like always shifting Mm -hmm. and something that was really scary when I first started my clothing line coming from a space where I had a consistent paycheck doing corporate design I was like dope I can do art and I can like make consistent money Mm -hmm. going out on your own is scary and for years Daisy LA was the only source of income I had and then I started to have people on my team and I was like oh my god I'm responsible for people and it was stressful it's like one bad month I'd be like freaking out but over the years of being an entrepreneur I've taken on other little streams of income like I bought a rental property in Palm Springs and I started doing interior design and then I started doing sponsored posts we rent our house out for photo shoots and now that I have lots of different streams of income I have so much more inner peace Mm -hmm. because if if one thing's not doing well then I kind of shift focus and yeah I also feel like as a freelancer, you have to become like a fucking accountant or something. Like you oh, need yeah. to know how to save, like how to manage your money. I'm like, tracking mm-hmm. money daily. Mm-hmm. It's just Especially me if out. you have employees or if you have a team. It, it's crazy out there. It is wild. <laughs> and it's wild because for so many years, Daisy was like my main thing. And it's been on like a downturn. I feel like online e-com did really well during the pandemic. Yeah. The past year, like it's been slow for Daisy and for a lot of other people. So that's scary because that was my main thing. But now it's like partnerships are becoming a bigger thing and interior design is becoming a bigger thing. Like coming off of Trixie Motel, like a lot of people discovered me and like have hired me as a designer because they saw me on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Can we like ask about that? So we want to know how did Trixie Motel come to be? How did you land that? It's an insane job. And then now you're doing things for internet celebrity, like royalty. Miss Dylan Mulvaney. Yes. I like, love can her. Can you talk about that? Can you, like, these are two massive things. How did they happen? Trixie Motel just kind of fell into my lap. <laughs> they, I guess I had been on HGTV's radar. And because I asked the casting producer who like found me, I was like, how? How? What's going <laughs> okay, on? Okay, okay. But it did not fall into your lap because you True. were I've been working so hard posting stuff on social media. And I feel like that's honestly the only way really to get exposure nowadays, yeah. especially in those industries that you thought weren't achievable, like HDTV. Um, so you were working hard yeah. and posting all your things, which is so smart because I feel like you got ahead of the game. Like you've been posting for a while now. I feel like you were one of the first people I actually ever saw on social media. Coming into your house, I'm like, holy like I've seen like full circle yes it's a full (laughs) circle I think you're generally one of the first creators I ever saw so like kind of like an OG so maybe yeah it didn't fall into your life you were this is uh inappropriate but you were exposing yourself (laughs) and that's how they found you (laughs) yeah which is kind of cool like if you're just focused on doing your thing sometimes people will notice and can change your life in really big ways like with Trixie Motel they said I had been on the HGTV radar and for other opportunities, they were like, oh, what about Danny, the color girl? And they were like, "It's her style's too bold. It's too yeah. much. And then when Trixie Motel came around, they were like, like oh, she's the color girl. Mm-hmm. And then the casting director hit me up. And they had just seen my stuff on the internet over the years. And they were like, we have this show. We're doing a wow. motel theme so makeover. Like a random email? Yeah. And then, Imagine like, got if a it went to spam. Imagine if that email <laughs> went <laughs> I hope they would find a way to contact so you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, then I did. They got me on the phone and I was like, uh, yeah, I want to try out for this. So I had to do like a tryout. I guess they did like interview with a lot of different designers and they record it and they showed Trixie and David Trixie's boyfriend and the producers. And I got the gig. That and it was crazy. Amazing. I mean, like, I would have been so, were you nervous? Oh interview? my God. Yeah. I would have been so nervous. I just like, I feel like right before an interview, I'm always like, oh. 
And as soon as it like comes on, I just have to like well, shake it Well, did you know what it was on. for? Like, did they tell you it was for Trixie? They, yeah, they gave me like the general gist of what was going on, but not all the details. But I was like, this project is perfect. I love Palm Springs. I love pink. I love drag <laughs> culture, themey things. And it just felt like it was like the perfect match. And me and Trixie got along like instantly. So it was very fun. Oh my God. So, I mean, we're talking about Trixie Motel. Like, you, you must tell us a little bit about the process and how it was decorating. I mean, that was probably a huge project. Was that one of your bigger projects you've ever done? For sure. I yeah. mean, it was a huge project. Like, I didn't have that many clients under my belt when I got this. Yeah. Like, I was a rookie and they were definitely taking a chance on me. I was super intimidated. <laughs> felt Aww. a little imposter syndrome like we all yeah. do from time yeah. to time. But I was like, I've never done a commercial property. And it's televised. Like, if you yeah. mess up. They have it on recording. Exactly. So, like, like how I did was, you like, know what to do? About every little th- I was like, are my nails going to be consistent in the scene? <laughs> like, I was, like, overthinking everything. How um, did you know what to do? Like, how did you know how to organize for such a big project without having done that before? There was lots of producers. I always have the help of my amazing partner, Philip. We love Philip. <laughs> <Hey>, Phil. <laughs> so that's, like, really nice to have that support system built in. Like, he's helped me from day one. So, like... I always could go to Philip and be like, I'm so stressed out. And he's like going through it with me. So that's really nice. We love a supportive partner. Yes. The best. (laughs) But I feel like Tay and I are like, well, just like all of us as decorators. I don't know if you go through this. Sometimes when you get bigger projects, like it could be a little unorganized and a little intimidating. And you're like, there's so much to do. Like, where do we start? And the I weight mean, of everything is like crushing. Like, yeah, this project is so big. And now you so have big. cameras on you. You're working with a celebrity. Like... I would be terrified, honestly, because there's just so many eyes on you. Were you you. taking a lot of Zoloft? How did you get through this? (laughs) I mean, I feel like there was a lot of anxiety leading up to it, but our cast and crew and Trixie immediately made me feel really comfortable. And then we were doing it every day for four and a half months. So you get like very used to it and you're like, all right. Yeah, oh you God. two moved there. I remember seeing this. For you like that you guys insane. got married there. Yes. <laughs> so it was a, like so one much. of the most emotional journeys in every single way. Like emotional highs, emotional lows. Like oh my God. I'm not a big crier, but I like had multiple breakdowns during this <laughs> yeah. process. I was like, <laughs> that makes oh my sense. God. Well, after the break, we'll come back and just you gotta tell us a little yeah, bit more about Trixie. Yeah, there's a lot more to know. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. We'll be back. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I've been having so much fun talking to Danny Daisy. Seriously. And we're going to be doing Q&As at the end. If you have any questions you want us to answer, then you can submit your own questions at accidentalexperts.com. Ask away. And we are back. We just heard about Trixie Motel. And now we want to ask Danny about her celebrity clients. Well, really quick, there's two Dannys here, guys. I oh, don't want you guys to get confused. Yeah. And they're spelled the same. I yeah. know. I know. So I love when it. we say like we're referring to Danny, it's Danny Daisy. <laughs> we're the design Dannys. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, but yeah, so tell us a little bit about the transition from Trixie Motel to like getting new clients. Like, do you think that really gave you exposure? I feel like it definitely cemented like my identity as like, okay, I like to use the word interior designer. I know that there's like, this is a little touch point for everyone. Oh, oh, she, and she gets hate for it. I don't call myself an interior designer, so I can't get hate for it. I say, fuck it. I've been a designer for 13 years and you're not going to take the word designer away from whatever I'm doing because <laughs> it is interiors. so deeply ingrained in my identity. And like, I'm changing the footprint of shit, you know, like <laughs> I'm doing all this stuff and I'm a like self-taught graphic designer. I've self-taught in a lot of things. Yeah. So I like reject. I know that like. Staying into a decorator. You're like, no, I'm an interior to me, designer. I'm a designer. Yeah. And like, I can't imagine not using that word. Yeah. Like being a designer is my whole life. Like. From print design, fashion design, now interior design. I'm like, you can take that. From take my the word dead body. Take <laughs> you can peel it away. But I know, I know it's a little touchy and people are mad because they spend a million dollars going to school in all these years. And oh. here I am designing motels on TV. And yeah, I'm like, you're doing I'm sorry. bigger things. That's kind of but something it that our show more talks about. Like, because, yeah, a lot of people, they message us and they're like, I'm going into interior design school because of you. And it's like, we didn't do that. Why are you? Why? Yeah. I mean, we're not trying to tell people not to go to school but we are trying to you know we always say raise awareness <laughs> which is so silly because it's not like raising awareness but there's other ways to achieve these goals you know these conversations are really important because at one point in time kids were taught that was the only thing mm-hmm. you 
had mm-hmm. to do. You need to go to college I to succeed. I don't use anything I learned in fashion design school in my day-to-day job. They taught us how to sew. And when I finally worked in the fashion industry, I was like, everything's on the computer. Like, why didn't <laughs> why you are you wasting my taxes? time? <laughs> yeah. 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 We're not taught the real life. The best way to learn is real life experience. Like, start as an intern. Like, start as low as you can to get in and then actually do the work and learn and grow. Like, rise up in the ranks I mean I also think there's like a huge percentage of people who end up studying something and they do something completely different a majority I feel like all of my friends and my family like my dad is an architect and that man is like nothing to be like he is not an architect you know he's like a book writer I mean I'm doing a lot more interior design than people who got their degree in it you know it's it's a touchy subject I know and I respect school is the right path for some people yeah I don't think I needed it. I got Mm -hmm. a two-year degree in fashion design that I don't utilize. And I have my little associate's degree from a school that doesn't even exist anymore because (laughs) it was kind of like whatever. It was like a little tiny trade school. Um, And then I had coworkers when I was doing t-shirt design that had a master's in graphic design. And I was at a higher up position (gasps) than they were because I had spent more time in the field doing the thing. Yeah. And you also have way less student debt. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So I think it is an important conversation. And I get like people are especially touchy about it. And there's some legal things, but I'm not breaking any laws like in California. But yeah, I mean, you hire people for those things. Like you need a contract. I worked with a contractor. Exactly. Yeah. So Girl, you're an interior designer. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. You can come fight me. Fight like, me in the comments. It's good engagement. Yeah, seriously. You're just throttling us with the algorithm. <laughs> so how long, actually, question, how long after you guys shot Trixie Motel did it air? So it was like pretty fast, actually. Yeah. So we wrapped in February and I think it oh aired in June. Whoa. Yeah, but it was a weird what? in between like being done and like doing this insane thing. And the world not being able to see it yet. And you, you couldn't know? share anything about it. Yeah. It was, it was like a little torturous. Wait, because I mean, I have been following you. So I remember all the little BTS. Were you not allowed to post those things until the show was about to air? At first, they didn't want me to even say that I was doing it or post anything the entire time. But luckily, Trixie and I like went to bat with the network. Aww. And we were like, listen, if you want us to hype and promote the stuff, have us do it while we're filming. Whoa, I like, can't believe sneaky, they let sneaky. you. And I know. I'm so glad that they let us. Because Trixie's like, bitch, I'm going on tour after this. And I'm not going to be posting anything. I'm like, you yeah. want that content from me and Trixie? Let us post while we're doing it and excited we about it. We love Trixie. Oh, yeah. my God. That's yeah. so great that like going to bat for you both. But obviously the reveals and stuff like that. So they were lenient, mm-hmm. but it made sense. Yeah. So – after that, I mean, okay, so now you've come home after doing like a crazy insane project. And what were you feeling like? Were you like, I'm super hyped for what's to come? Or were you like a little sad it was over? Or did you already have projects lined up? I was so relieved it was over. Like <laughs> a great experience. But it was like such a long process mm-hmm. from like originally getting casted, pre-production. Everything was like a year maybe. Yeah. And it was just like the biggest weight off my shoulders. I felt so proud so excited, ready to share. To be honest, I thought it was going to blow me up a little bit more. I'm a little pissed about that. <laughs> no, Whatever. Like, no. I'm a little salty. <laughs> but what's cool, I guess, is like a lot of people saw it. They might have not just went and followed my Instagram. No, a <laughs> lot of people. Maybe you're not seeing it like in followers, but I've been seeing your name everywhere. Really? Attached to Trixie Motel. Yes. Oh, hell yeah. On, in comments and stuff. Like, people would be like, this looks like Trixie Motel by Danny Daisy and stuff. Like, on just like random TikTok videos. So but you it's are also it. led to a shit ton of brand deals and like income like i assume w- you weren't working on joybird like j- like i the- was in talks with them before but only because i've worked with them for so many years but that definitely sweetened the deal okay and then things like the tile line were you already doing that like what- they actually because i designed a lot of custom prints for the motel so the tile company I knew before, and they did custom tiles for the motel. So Whoa. these are kind of relationships I had before, but I will say being on the show brought a lot of opportunities. It and did give me a you. lot of new, like a new audience. And I'm very grateful. Like they're mm-hmm. amazing. And I got some clients from it. I'm getting brand deals. So like amazing things are coming from it. Yeah. Things in bigger ways than I expected. And then some things in smaller ways. And I think you just kind of have to like be ready. I was ready for nothing to happen. And I was also ready for everything. Yeah. I was like ready yeah, for get, 1 yeah. million Instagram followers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I will take that extra 40,000 or 40,000 Instagram followers. I think I got. It's stuff. really hard like, to grow on dope. Instagram. Yeah. It's That's, really it's hard. Really it's like hard. the hardest platform to grow on. And it was on Discovery Plus. It wasn't on Netflix. You know, I watched you like every Bachelorette get a million followers. No. And I was like, these girls yeah. don't even do anything. 
No, that's so frustrating because people what? need a subscription to watch it. Like, people no, to pay extra. where is it on? Because well, I now watched... it's on HBO Max. Okay, because like, originally it was just about? Discovery Plus. I saw an HBO Max. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I, I binged it. Oh. It was great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you watched it. I'm a number it. one fan. <laughs> Wait, that is such a big difference being from going from one specific platform where people needed that specific subscription because of the new um streaming models a lot of people were mad oh my and now that it's on hbo it's way more accessible it would have been cool if it came out originally on a more accessible platform when like there was a lot of hype but i'm just glad it's there now because a lot of people can watch it now so tell us a little bit about designing a sofa like how does that work it was like the coolest thing because i really more than any like facet of design i do i see myself as like a product designer Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a print designer. And now that I'm, like, getting much more into the world of interiors, to be able to design, like, a product for an interior utilizing my print was the coolest, like, mashup of all these things I love. And I love my couches. Like, the fabric turned out gorgeous. And both prints I'm obsessed with. And it's just, like, one of my favorite things I've been able to do. It is very impressive. Like, I wish people need to go and search it right now because – when I saw them, when you posted it, I was like, jaw drop. She has it in her guest room and I'm like, I want to sit on it so bad. And they didn't let us. I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit on it after this. Yes. We need <laughs> more beautiful. printed furniture in the world. Like, where did it go? Where did it go? There's like no, I haven't seen a sofa like yours in so long. Right? It was yeah. like they were around in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And that was like a big, one of my favorite eras of design because it was so bold. But I'm like, nobody does printed furniture but anymore. But even so, like, your print is so different too. I just feel like it's such a different sofa like I haven't seen a sofa like that before I mean of course and so did you design the print that's on it or was it an original like was it your original design did you work with the team on Joybird doing that so it was originally it's actually one of the Joybird collection prints is the print that I'm wearing right now this like so it was an existing print well I made it kind of simultaneously as I was designing my collection I was also thinking about the Joybird collaboration because that had been in the works for like a year. So I was like, what's a you print a that big could be year. both? Such a big year. Yeah, like a lot going on. And everything like came out at the same time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like to be able to do because our tile matches the furniture. <laughs> I'm working on like a wallpaper situation right now. We're just talking to like we're trying to find the perfect part. I'm for actually that. have you never done wallpaper before? We're Everyone is like harassing me about wallpaper, which I get because for the Trixie Motel, I did a custom print for every room Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone like wants those prints. I'm like waiting for the right. And I'm with the same girls like DBP, DBA, the same team. We have the same management team. You you know that they look out and they're like, we're going to find the best partner for this category because I think this is a really big category for you as a print yeah. And interior designer. And I mean, you have wallpaper everywhere. Like, I feel like I think I Danny, it. I think wallpaper. Or just like super fun prints yes. and that's um, wallpaper. I saw your ceiling. wallpaper. It was so cute. I was Thank like you. chopping the bed. I was like, I want wallpaper. <laughs> 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 Gotta be patient sometimes. Yeah, you definitely do. But I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see your wallpaper. I just want like a one room that's like print monochromatic where like Whoa. the floors Floor match ceiling. the walls, match the furniture, match the curtains. Oh my God, like with your tiles, tiles and your sofa. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. I'm working oh, on a no client doubt. project where I'm kind of doing some stuff like that. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and put a lot of my things I designed in this. hundred percent. Yes. We just did that for our most recent project in Australia. Um, well, we used the same wallpaper company that we use for all our wallpaper line. And it was beautiful. It was perfect. It was like, we should be using all of our own mm-hmm. company products. Hype your stuff. I mean, you're designing it because you like it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're hiring you because they like your taste. Yeah. So use your stuff in your space. Yeah. And so, promote it more. Yeah, we have to. So tell us a little bit about your other clients. I mean, there's one special client I really want to ask about if you're allowed to talk. Oh about yeah. Her. Dylan Mulvaney <laughs> is the best. I met her literally the day before she started Days of Girlhood. Because at what? the time, yeah. Whoa. So this is like one of those things that people don't realize like has been kind of brewing That's in the crazy. background. Whoa. So I met her the night before. We were with the same social media agency. and DBA? No, because no, I, I, we both ended up switching. So we were with oh. a different agency. And Thank this you. was before Trixie Motel came out. Because DBA was like, 
come with us as soon as they like caught they wind. They can still Dylan's with talent. Mm-hmm. So Dylan's with CAA. Oh, oh my but God. at the time we were both with a smaller agency because we were a bit smaller at the time. And she was just the sweetest. We vibed so well. And the next day she did like day one announcing mm-hmm. that she was like day one of girlhood coming out as a trans that woman. That series is amazing. And I was immediately like so proud and excited. And then we would see each other because we were with that same talent agency. And when she got her house, she was immediately like, Danny, you have to help me with this. And I was like, yes. That's amazing. And I haven't seen that many pictures. Like, have you posted about it? Are you guys done? Like, what? how has the process been? It's Dylan is the busiest girl in the world. (laughs) Okay, I can imagine. So we've been, and I'm a busy girl. So like, we've been kind of dancing around our schedules and it's, it's pretty done. But after all of that drama recently she literally like had to go into hiding oh so i don't know been, about like, the drama have, oh my god i mean i know there's kind of been drama literally since day one of girlhood but is there more oh there's a whole like bud light scandal right now and dylan's the sweetest what? most innocent person and she's being attacked it is, is so light? unfair yeah she did it like a like, one sponsored post with them and i'm like we all do sponsored posts like oh yeah. my she's god like, yeah what People, people are crazy. People online. went ham. Oh my god! But she's just, she does the not deserve this, genuine. and it makes me so sad. But she's basically like, kind of like had to take a break because yeah. she's like so overwhelmed and yeah, literally so, getting death threats. Oh my god! I'm, I too have gotten those. Like TikTok is so <laughs> messy, Savage. and like I like to be on messy TikTok, like cake drama. I love cake drama, but I've not come across that. So maybe that's, it's not, it's not on everyone's radar. I hope but, she's doing yeah. well. But she's doing a lot better. And then she posted the most beautiful, like, eloquent response video when she was ready. And I was like, that's my girl. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. She handles the hate so well, too. I'm, like, her biggest fan, too. Oh, my the God. Like, oh, yes. I'm like. Yeah, she is amazing. And strength, too. I like your salty responses. I'm, like, with, <laughs> I'm on that level. You're, I like, always salty. Try harder. Taste living my best savage life. savage online. I'm, like, I can't. Oh, I'm people just... are so mean to me. And it's literally, like you're mad I'm painting walls it's it's like he'll, it's a joke how mad they are that I exist and it's comical so I I make stupid posts about them I love it and then people respond being like what like why are you giving these people attention why do you give haters attention like you're you're chasing them for clout and I'm like I'll make more videos for you clout I don't sit care down this is an app and we're having fun like this is like, your account yeah, and it's painting kinda, a wall but like, what so is wrong silly with you because I feel like our niche and our videos like what do you how are you gonna just hate on us for like painting our walls pink and colorful like we're literally just good vibes online and everyone's just like attacking us for the good vibes i will (laughs) say i'm in my fill-in era oh yes yes and i'm doing these reverse renovations i've seen them and people get so confused people are so pissed but i live whoa 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 whoa. i'm so sorry (laughs) i wish i explained yes so for example when we first bought this house it was staged like super basic Mm -hmm. and like they always are everything all white walls the kitchen was gray everything was like minimal and i took videos of touring the house as you do and then I did a post the other day where I acted like this was the before. And then the really basic was the after. And people are like tearing so me apart. Like, yeah. Genius. So it's like when she's adding the towel, she's taking off the towel, like the pink <gasps> tile. Danny. And people believe it. Like I did it for the pink bathroom because the bathroom was so basic That's before. So smart. And I was like, this tacky bathroom has to go. And, and it's like the prettiest over. bathroom. It's like pink checkered towels. And she's just like taking it apart, turning it no, into you're, like a gray you're starting bathroom. starting a trend. Like that is a genius. I call it reverse renovations. You guys should do it. No, but I feel like that's also genius because now people are like appreciating it a little bit more. They're like, how can you go from something so colorful and happy to something Thing. I feel like the before and after is crazy when you see it pink to gray. It's like, oh my God, it's so sad now. It's reverse renovation it's psychology. Like, yes, yes, it is. is. It's genius. People are like, oh wow, it actually looks really good, colorful. That made me really sad to yes. see. <laughs> and it all kind of originated from this post I saw where uh, Sunset Magazine, which normally posts dope shit, but they posted this makeover of like the coolest retro bathroom, oh. the most amazing tile tub. And then they like did a slide to the after and it was like, sterile and looked like a hospital and i we was like bonded over this at our I basil was pissed. i was so pissed when i saw that your story because so you reposted everyone you reposted. and that got me thinking i was like what if i like joked around and because this that. seemed like a joke post i was like yeah how did they think this no, was okay like a meme. it was a lie right oh my god it was the most beautiful bathroom it was so sad okay so now i know you are working with dylan are you working with other people like do they find you online i mean i feel like most of 
well, most of our clients come from online. So where do your clients most, come from? Lots all. of the internet. All, literally all. <laughs> lots of the internet. I mean, it's such a great way to promote what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And like your people will find you. Definitely yeah. Trixie Motel. My latest client. I'm working on almost a 5,000 square foot lake house in Alabama of all places. Oh and God. I found they me. are the cutest couple the cutest. I saw. I helped mm-hmm. them get engaged on our first trip I out there. I am obsessed. Oh like, my God. Wait, yes. Okay, his boyfriend recall. reached out to me and was like, hey, you're designing my boyfriend's house. Like, I want to propose to him while you're out here. Will you help me? And I was like, ah! yes. <laughs> like, I got so excited. Um, and it was beautiful. And they're the cutest couple. And they found me on Trixie Motel. My client, Alex, is a huge Trixie fan. Aww. And they're wonderful. And this house is gorgeous. And it has, like, this wild backstory of, like, inheriting it unexpectedly. And oh my God. just, like, the stars aligning. And then they plan on getting married there when we're oh done. My gosh. So it's, like, this beautiful – it needs to be its own show, honestly. Yes. But, I mean, it's such a huge house. You're going to be doing so much. Right? Yeah. We're actually going out there next week because it's kind of like halfway. They like tore down all the walls and like we're like fixing a lot of the stuff because it's like a fixer. Well, okay. That's actually crazy because I know you didn't go to school for interior design and stuff. So how did you even learn about like construction and stuff? Like, like are you just like winging it? Like, how do you know what wall to take down? Walls. Like, how are it's you? It's still a learning process. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning. Yeah. You know? I mean, I feel like in this industry or any industry you're always learning like there's always something to learn you know but I don't know I see you do all these crazy flips I mostly just decorate I've tried doing the renovating process and I do not like I don't know how you do it lean into find a good contractor and lean into working with them because then you could just be like I want this to be tiled I want this bathroom to be like this and they'll figure it out and I mock it up on the computer which helps Mm -hmm. like me feel confident to like all right like let's do that and I've been working a lot with Philip my partner um, he has been learning SketchUp, like the 3D modeling. Yeah, the renders. So like I basically like with the graphic <laughs> design background, take a picture and then I Photoshop stuff on top of it. And it looks pretty realistic, but yeah. like it's harder to do things like yeah, break like wall in a photo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So Philip's been building like the 3D model and, and we'll be like, SketchUp is amazing. This. SketchUp is like the best one. That's yeah. like the legit program and contractors know it. Architects know it. Like it's a pretty like industry standard. Mm-hmm. So that's been kind of how we're doing these bigger things, especially with remote jobs. Thank you, Philip. I know. You know I want to Philip in my life. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Bello, Bello needs to Come learn on, how Bello, to step it up. <laughs> how to make the renders. No. Honestly. No, I have someone on my team who actually does SketchUp and I've learned a little bit, but Honestly, props to Philip because it's so complicated, especially if you don't have a background in design and stuff. There's just like so much math and like so many blueprints and just you know, it's crazy. crazy. I crazy don't want to build. A home. I don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't have the time to go right? on there and <laughs> type like- up the entire layout with all the measurements and stuff. It's crazy. But- I hate measurements. Yeah, I mess them up all the time. I order things like I ordered. Oh like a, I've done this with clients where I thought it was like a full size table, and it comes and it's a kids table. Oh. Wait, did that? What <gasps> happened that? I was like, it's so much smaller. The, the chandelier. chandelier. And we lighting. got screwed with a vintage oh chandelier. My oh, my God. And no, the mirror. The yeah, mirror. We, there was two. Oh, my God. We bought this amazing 250-year-old vintage but mirror. But when it's vintage, you don't have you don't have sizing. You just see a photo and you're like, You just sent yes, us a picture. Bye. And I kid you not, it looked like the biggest freaking mirror I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I don't. And there was like other things for sizing. Like for scale reference, for scale and, it reference all really seemed and it looked good. Yes, I think there was like a table. That table must have been like miniature sized because when the mirror arrived, it was actually like one and a half foot. <sighs> no, <laughs> I know, I know, and yeah, it was like that typical like that Facebook market, us, no measurements, like, like I don't know. So yeah. I mean, whatever. We figured a great place to put it, but yeah. So we we understand you on oh the my measurements. God. It happens to me all the time. Too big and too small. I'm like, how do I fuck it up both ways? <laughs> But, like, now Philip's it. been, like, I'll do the whole mock-up. The client will be, like, great, love it. And then he'll do the sizes of everything. Oh, yeah. And he'll be, like, bitch, none of this fits in this room. And I'm, like, oh, I got to go back <laughs> to the start drawing over. board. You um, guys are a power couple. <laughs> yeah. Truly. Oh, my God. You, as we've, we've only, like, touched the surface of a few of the projects you've worked on just in, like, the last year, to be honest. You've had an insane year. And can you tell the listeners maybe what you have planned in the next year? Some, like, secret things. Obviously, wallpaper. Well, not very. I know there's a lot of NDAs in this industry, but uh, whatever you can share. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty much an open book. I'm I like NDA. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, right now I'm just like working on this amazing house in Alabama. Working on getting a wallpaper collaboration going because I want my mono print room. The room. <laughs> I love that. And you know, 
obviously pitching for more shows. I'm addicted now. Like I need to do it again. Like love the camera, love the whole experience. And the camera loves you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So talking to production companies, pitching stuff, fingers crossed it'll happen. It's been a slow year for my clothing line, which is like sad for me to like, but good things are happening. So I'm trying to like like let go of things and embrace other things and make space for new next. bigger things i love that and all of this you'll be sharing online so share your social medias where everyone can find yes. you i will be over sharing everything do at it go danny daisy it's d-a-n-i-d-a-z-e-y that's on tiktok that's on instagram mm-hmm. and then my clothing lines daisy la d-a-z-e-y underscore la on don't go the tiktok i don't put a lot on <laughs> but follow that instagram yeah your Instagrams are amazing. We Thank should, you. We should yeah. be posting more on our Instagrams. And we will be tagging everyone can find you everywhere. And everyone should go look at like not like the new couch line. We need to go sit on that right now. Yes. We need Let's to go, go jump on it. That. Let's go right now. Thank you so much, Danny, for having us in your home, in your amazing home, which we're going to go get a tour right now. I'm so yeah, excited. Hell yeah. <laughs> you guys are the best. This is like little dream team. Aww, Thank Full you. circle moment. Seriously. Thank you for having us. That was really cool. I got to meet her for the first time, but you've already known her. I know. And honestly, just being in her space was so different. Um, I'm just like so grateful that she let us be there. We were filming and we were just vibing with her. And this it was really amazing. was just like hanging out with a pal. Honestly, the tea she spilled and everything. <laughs> no, I am obsessed with her. That was so great. Thank you to Danny Daisy for letting us into your home because that was honestly not what I expected. Like the, it was just everything was bigger and bigger better yes it was amazing um and quick little story about us we oh, literally got God. how are we such messes we were a little late to like an hour late to hanging out with danny but because <laughs> we got locked out of our freaking rental car oh we're in the car right now we are in the car right now and actually so we got locked out of this beautiful high-tech futuristic literally an egg tesla and so we rented a tesla because we've been driving around la because we don't live here and somehow it locked us out and tesla owners have said that shouldn't be possible yet somehow it happened no it literally is physically impossible and it literally happened to us right before we were supposed to drive to her house yes right before our like gathering which is so like the key got locked inside my phone got locked inside i could not contact the owner like i was i was extremely panicked yeah like okay basically you have like a key in the tesla and if you the keys inside it's not supposed to lock and we we left the keys inside and it locked so Which Elon Musk, I have an issue with the him. The impossible directly. happened. <laughs> the impossible happened. Um, and we were supposed to charge it too. So we were like extra late. So literally like thank you to Danny for waiting for us because that was really? literally a mess. And obviously we made it and this was just amazing. Um, and this was really fun. So let's get to the Into Q&A. Our, yeah, our question. We've been answering some questions at the end. So if you guys are interested in this, always stay tuned because we'll always be answering some questions. You guys can always ask away on accidentalexperts.com. And today's question is, what project has been your favorite to work together on? And that's an easy one. Very easy. Like first one, which one is it? Obviously, it's our Romeo and Juliet project. And actually, the Romeo and Juliet, if you aren't aware, you guys can find that on our social medias. We posted literally from start to finish all the process. We love to document everything. So it's on our TikToks and Instagram. Oh my God, we didn't do our YouTube. We never. We were so bad at being content creators. (laughs) We vlogged everything and actually never edited it. Because it's just really hard. It's so hard to do long form. And we took so much footage. We have so much footage of the entire thing all of the struggles all of the highs and the lows yeah and uh, which which i might have deleted by accident remember because no I was one like will switching. ever know but know. us <laughs> whatever i guess that didn't happen but <laughs> that was that a happen. very fun and whimsical and eclectic project that we worked on it was actually was that our f- no, no that was our, our second. second and the client the client's what made it amazing because she gave us full creative liberty so that is the perfect example of danny and my's brains just going wild yeah like we she said do whatever you want like you and tay i love your brains do exactly what you want and that is literally that's the client you dream of it's a sexy project i'm not gonna i think about that ceiling every day like we did a sunset 
yeah, ceiling. sunset mural like on a the sunset ceiling. mural. Mm-hmm. And it was so beautiful. And we mixed it with amazing colors, even though everyone hated the blue I chose for the main wall, which I I don't think everyone hated it because I didn't receive any of that hate. Well, I think I you just got on the wrong side of TikTok. <laughs> you got on anti blue TikTok for that. I know, but I don't regret no regrets here because no, I still perfect. like my blue wall. It's like the yeah. perfect the perfect project and the client was is now our, literally our friend. Like we had slumber parties with her she's, every single she's night. She's staying with me in a few weeks in Miami, so I'm what? so excited about I'm that. Jealous, Rachel, I know. I love you. I know she's amazing. <laughs> but anyway, if you guys want to see that, you can on our socials. I feel like that's where our most viral DIY was born, which is the huge Valentine's Day mm-hmm. candies. Yeah. Which Tay was a genius enough to figure out how we create that, and that became like kind of like the main thing of that project. I feel like so that was really fun. Um. And yeah, so well, so that was our favorite project we've done together. But we haven't even posted about our other projects coming up. We have a few projects coming up. We've done Australia, and now we have another San Francisco project, and we're in talks for more. So, so stay tuned. And I also just want to remind you guys all the love and support you guys have been giving us. It means so much to us. And if you leave a comment, a like, a review, if you subscribe, it really, really helps. It us. makes a difference. So we can do more of these, and we can keep traveling around and showcasing other artists and and interviewing more and cool creative. So leave a review, subscribe because. We love you and we want to keep doing yeah. this. <laughs> it's been really fun. And massive thank you to our crew who have helped us organize this entire thing. We clearly are messes and we get locked out of our own cars. So how could we do this without any help? So thank you for the team. Thank you to our management, DBA, and for human content for organizing all of this. We and, love you. Yeah. And thank you to Denny Daisy. And thanks to you guys for tuning in. Mwah, 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 mwah. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you're enjoying Accidental Experts, click over there to watch more episodes and don't forget to subscribe to follow the journey.